We're going to jump into the U.S. North. Uh, we're going to start off with Ohio. Uh, so in January, there were four qualifiers across Ohio. It was, there was Cleveland, Newark, Van Wert, and Cincinnati. So we're going to start off with the Cleveland qualifier. Uh, at this tournament, 8120 Electric Hornets won the Inspire Award, and the high score at the event was 371. Uh, I'm not totally sure, though, who the, who the winning alliance was, since the Orange Alliance does not seem to have the results for those matches. Um, but then we're going to move on to Newark, which was the next qualifier. In the This event was canceled, though, due to the weather, and the teams advancing to the Ohio State Championship were picked at random, and those are teams... Were, yep, that's how it works. 4537 DRSS Enterprise, 13332 Accidentally Brilliant, and 14909 Tech Empire. And then the fourth team to go was the host team, uh, 6987. And... While we're right here, I have a quick question for you guys. What do you think of the idea of the host team advancing? Um, I personally don't like it, but I know that some others have different opinions. So um, as a host team, I might have a biased perspective, but hosting is an insanely hard job. It's it's something that's unparalleled. I think that like, and I never I never really thought about this. I never really knew this until I did it. But this this job is much more taxing than I feel any other um, aspect of FTC is. And because of that, I think that it's somewhat it, it's somewhat valid. But again, if if there is a limited amount of slots, like like there are, especially in like states like California. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it should. Maybe something like this shouldn't be. Um, shouldn't be one of the two slots. Shouldn't be 50% of advancement. But definitely for larger events, um, having the host team advance, I think, is valid. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, sorry, I'm just gonna jump in and say I get your point, but I disagree with you. My school in the last five years has hosted uh, three, two qualifiers, and now this year another league championship. And I have done a big portion of that planning. Um, similar to the summer event that I put together. And while it is a lot of work, you should, if you're going to do an event, you should do it because you want to do it, not because you want to get that like auto host. And I think my team has never taken our host. We, uh, we don't offer it anymore since we're in the league system, but uh, five years ago and four years ago when we had a qualifier, we did not take it. I'm just gonna say that Absolutely. So an interesting point from the chat, Eric asked, uh, or he said, I don't like it, but otherwise, would teams host? Hmm. So, do you guys? I think, think that's a valid. Them? I think that's a valid point. Um, but I mean, like personally, I think that uh, our teams would definitely host regardless. It's not that that kind of. Uh, I don't think we're we're doing it for the host slot at all. Like it's it's just something that we want to give back to our community. But I think that in in regions where this program isn't as prominent. Yeah, it is a it is a real benefit for those teams, and it's something that um, that would wouldn't happen otherwise. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're gonna move on to the uh, Van Wert qualifier at um, at Ohio, uh, where ten one forty four trial and error took home the gold medal, uh, the Inspire Awards. Can we get some gold medal emotes in the chat, uh, everyone? Um, and then the highest score at that event was 330 points in semifinal one, match one. And the winner of the event, the winning alliance of the event was comprised of an alliance of 5501 VW Robotics, 14174 Cougar Robotics, 12166 New Brenham Technobirds. So lastly, for Ohio, we're going to move on to the Cincinnati qualifier, where we saw 10465 the Bionic Tigers make taking home an Inspire Awards. Can we get some more gold medals in the chat for them? Uh, and the highest score uh, at that tournament was in semifinal two, match three, which was 380 points. And then in the finals, the highest score was 347 points, and the winning alliance was comprised of 10464 the Bionic Tigers. So can we throw another gold medal in the chat for them? And they got what we're going to call a double cling bling, taking home the winning alliance and the Inspire Award. So partnering with them was 5040 Nuts and Bolts and 14365 Summit Knights. So we're going to check out the finals match right here. Um, so in that top right corner, we see 5040. Uh, in the bottom left, we see um, 10037 Sigma. And then... Um, Somewhere in the back there, I believe we have Bionic Tigers. Uh, not totally sure. I can't see that back robot. Um, so this is a great match, really competitive robots. 
Um, 50-40 has been, and 7 Sigma both, have had an amazing year so far, uh, doing quite well at the West Virginia tournament and doing well here. Um, mm -hmm. Both those teams are already qualified for the World Championships in Detroit. So that's a great start. But yeah, totally, we yeah. See, we see 7 Sigma over there with kind of their trademark. Their plan is all driving into the crater this year. So they aren't going over sending. They're just driving right in and intaking stuff. And it works fairly well. Um, I'm surprised personally at how well it works. Um, but they definitely managed to pull it off. Does anyone know like what type of drivetrain they're using? I mean, are they Mechanums or? Uh, they're saw... four inch eight Andy Mark HD Mechanums. Oh, interesting. Because I saw in their autonomous, like they decided to do like, uh, like a back wheel turn instead of like going sideways, which I guess must have been a tactical decision. But yeah. Yeah, I know personally, um, strafing an autonomous scares me unless you have um, encoder wheels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's just me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we strafe an autonomous with no encoders. <laughs> it's quite fun. It's quite fun. All right, so we're going to move over to the great state of Indiana, where there was only one event that occurred during the month of January, which was the Rover League Championship. Uh, at this event, 14400 Space Cadets took home some bling by winning the Inspire Award. Uh, and the high score for that event was 305 points in semifinal one, match one. The winning alliance was comprised of 15 1, 90, full steam ahead, 14 5, 96, XLR 8, and our Inspire Award winner, 14 400 Space Cadets, who got a double cling bling of Inspire and winning alliance. So let's throw some gold medals in the chat, guys. I know that you all are subbed, so throw some gold medals in there. Um, we're going to move on to our next state, which is my home state of Illinois. So the top five teams currently in Illinois are 6287 Vertigo, uh, 8907 Blue Box Bots, 10138 Newton Busters, 8620 Worm Gear Warriors, and 10101 Binary Bullets. So there is this really cool video that, that we're going to look at right now, which is the Red Alliance comprised of 14615 and 10635, where they scored over 400 points in a league meet. So here we go. Um, the two robots to watch is uh, that robot that is in all red there and lighting up themselves in red. Um, that is uh, turbocharged. They're amazing this year. We've talked with them in the last few shows. And their partner, 10635. I'm not quite sure where they are. I believe they're in the bottom left corner of, yes, they just moved uh, on the right uh, stream, the right camera feed. Um, so here we go. I mean, it's, it's like we've seen in a lot of matches so far this year. They're just going and going and going and going, and they're just filling, taking from the crater, filling the um, lander. And, I mean, to be honest, it, these matches get kind of boring because it's kind of just the same thing over and over and over again. And uh, both these robots right here have an extending arm so, uh, mm -hmm. and collector. Definitely. It's interesting to see kind of different sub metas evolve in different regions. Like those are a lot of kind of masquerade style arm robots, which kind of retract and then rotate and then extend, which manages some of the center of balance issues that traditionally arise in arm robots. Yeah, um, cool. it's a it's a cool thing, and especially 400 points for a league meet, especially in Illinois, is pretty crazy. Uh, I mean, scores can only go up from there. I think 400 is like the sixth or seventh highest score so far this year. Um, mm -hmm. You can check out ftcstats.org to see the, all of the high scores. I know that uh, everyone's chipping away at all the Michigan high scores right now. I don't think anyone has surpassed it, right? Ethan. Somebody matched it, oh, um, matched and it. they matched yeah. it with 30 less autonomous points, which yeah, is pretty yeah. interesting. That's pretty um, crazy. It is. Uh, and, uh, something that's significant in league meets, especially with having really high scores, is traditionally in like qualifiers, you have a lot of chances to run with your partner. In a league meet, it's all qualification matches, so really, you probably only got to run with them once. So yeah. it's harder to get super high scores. 
Um, one thing with league meets, uh, Team Thirty One Hundred One Boombots and Ten Three Four Five Royal Blue, they're in our league. Um, I mean, we've had like three or four meets over the season, so like they have had chances to like compete like together and like figure out like how like they drive together and all that stuff. So I think that helps a little bit when it comes to like putting up these really high scores. And uh, Abbas, maybe you can answer this because I'm looking at FTC stats right now. Um, did they get any points in Endgame? Because it was 135 auto, 307 tele up, and nothing for Endgame. No, no, um, I don't know. It's like weird, I guess, the way FTC stats reports Florida scores. But yeah, they both hung um, okay. all or the last two finals matches. In the first finals match, uh, Royal Blue disconnected about a minute in. So they lost that match, and um, I, my alliance actually won that one, 394 to 384. All right, nice. Um, so we're going to move over to Wisconsin, where there were three competitive regionals that took place in the month of January, one being the Thumb... Uh, oh, God, I forgot the event's name, because I wrote it here wrong. Um, it's Thumb Wars. Was, Thumb Wars, okay. It's uh, autocorrected as something weird. Thumb Wars, uh, hosted by uh, Supposable Thumbs, an FTC team there. Um, so at this tournament, 8680 Crack and Pinion, one of my favorite FTC, T FTC teams, took home the Inspire Award. So uh, let's throw some gold medals in the chat for them. Uh, the high score for the event was 400 in finals match two, and the winning alliance was comprised of 92-25. Oh, someone's got to help me here. Meta, Grobalize, uh, Ethan, do you want to take a stab at that team name? Uh, nope, I'm okay. <laughs> nope, maybe Tyler can uh, copy and paste it in the chat. There you go. Um <laughs> uh, partnered with them was 79-72, uh, Great Scott, and uh, their alliance captain was 8680, Kraken Pinion, who got a double cling bling of like a few other teams so far tonight. So uh, a week later at the Fox Valley qualifier, 10-100 Phoenix Force took home the gold medal Inspire Award. Uh, and in finals match one, there was an event high score of 259 points. Uh, the winning alliance for that event was 14542 Lake County School and 10686 Phoenix. The last something, qualifier. Oh, yeah, something just, super notable about Thumb Wars was we actually saw 8680 solo get 40 minerals. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like. Oh, yeah, that was in finals two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finals one. Uh, we could not get that. Uh, we could not get that video from them. Uh, but. That is pretty insane. It was. And uh, they also, if I remember correctly, they score in autonomous, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, they I did think, that like, at West Virginia, too. Mm -hmm. Their uh, their extension was just so fast. Like, they could go, like, everywhere over the field and still have mm -hmm. time to, like, get into the crater at the end of the match or at the end of the autonomous period. <laughs> yeah. So uh, at the Lake County qualifier... Uh, which was also called uh, NAC Tack. Uh, 7974 Great Scott got the Inspire Award again. Uh, the high score for the event was, uh, or got the Inspire Award. They were on the winning alliance at the uh, Thumb Wars. Um, the high score for the event was 382 points from Finals 1, and the winning alliance was comprised of 8680 Crack and Pinion, 9224 Atomic Overflow, and 7974 Great Scott. Uh, so something interesting is at the uh, NAC attack, um, Great Scott won the event and got Inspire along with Crack and Pinion. And at the Thumb Wars, Crack and Pinion won Inspire and won the event, partnered with Great Scott. So just something kind of funny. Um, so I think we have a video to show from the Lake County qualifier or NAC attack. Um, this is finals two, I believe. No sound. Um, so here we go. Uh, just let me get my bearing. Yeah, right there in the middle, the collector that just extended out, that is 8680 Crack and Pinion. Uh, that is one of the top teams in question that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just like in past years, just like last year, they have an amazing robot. Mm -hmm. Something that's interesting is they, right there, collected both samples so they just double sampled for their alliance and then they reach up to score both gold minerals it's pretty awesome um i have a question for uh everyone does anyone know like what happens if 8680 goes into the crater like are they able to get back out or i'm, I'm not, not sure. sure 
I do know that they're in chat, so I'm sure they can answer that in a moment when they hear that question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, they're just another great robot, just like a lot of bots we've been looking at tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. Interestingly, they do have a separate collector and um, extending arm. Mm -hmm. Another thing, though, that I will point out, I, I remember pointing this out a month ago and talking about some other robots, is if another, if a Blue Alliance robot wanted to cross through and uh, cross through that zone, if 8680 didn't get out of the way, they would get a penalty. Uh, we're not really going to see that right now at uh, lower level qualifiers, but I'm sure we'll see some teams having their hands forced and uh, being forced to move from that neutral zone. Because mm -hmm. um, as everyone should know by now, you're not allowed to block that. Yeah, yeah I think 8680 is going to face some significant defense once teams really uh, understand this uh, the rules better. And um, that, I think, will slow them down quite significantly. I don't think we're going to see these 40-some-odd uh, minerals being scored by them anymore after after teams start to play more intelligently with them. Yeah, and uh, one of the members of uh, Crack and Pinion just told me that their bot can actually fit in the crater. Not exactly sure what you mean, but I assume you mean it can't go over the crater. Um, anyway, it's still an amazing robot. I mean, we could see here that um, Silver Minerals are about halfway full just in this match. Uh -huh. it's, that's yeah, all and, they're by like, and they're barely moving. It's, it's amazing, like, how fast and efficient uh, this robot is. Yep. It it really is. And it's interesting to see um, angled slides, which traditionally suffer from a lot of binding issues, being used really, really effectively in FTC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I mean, I think one of the things that's helping that is go build a slides. I don't know what kind of slides Crack and Pinion is using, mm -hmm. but I know my team is using go build a slides on an angle, and just the sheer fact that it has a bungee to pull. Um, pull the extensions back down so that there's no tangling issues or anything is pretty crazy um, and uh, pretty helpful. So um, I just want to remind chat to be gracious and professional. I'm not sure what's going on, but I see a lot of, uh, I see some <laughs> argument <laughs> happening. So uh, let's just watch and enjoy these great <laughs> FTC events. So we're going to move on to Minnesota where there were four uh, events that happened um, in January, so what at the Salk Middle School Saturday League Championship, the Inspire Award winner was 12-6-49, Code Blooded. The high score was 251 in semifinals to match one, and the winning alliance was comprised of 84-73, Blue Lightning, and 91-82. At the Salk Middle School Sunday League Championship, the Inspire Award winner was 11-190, Mecha Dojo Robotics. The high score was 322 in qualification match 10. And the winning alliance was comprised of 9890 Rubies, 11301 Mustang Gear Gang, and 13651 Nailed It. Um, at the Burningsville High School Saturday Qualifier, the Inspire Award winner was 3763 Piece of Cake. The high score was 377 in Finals 2. And the winning alliance was comprised of 9415 Wrench Ressings at 3763 Piece of Cake and 84-38 Quantum Leap. Uh, then at the Burningsville High School Sunday qualifier, uh, the Inspire Award winner was 12-5-28 Next Gen, and the winning alliance was comprised of 78-97 Knights of Procrastination, which is an amazing team name, and 12-5-28 Next Gen, who got a double cling bling winning Inspire and uh, winning alliance. Uh, they were also partnered with 14-6-6-1 Jabba the Hutt. That was a lot of talking. Um, in, with the rest of the North region, Nebraska has their state championship on February 9th. Uh, and North and South Dakota have their joint championship on February 2nd. So there has yet to be any tournaments in the states. Uh, we have another FTC recap in three or four weeks. Uh, four weeks, I believe. Uh, so we'll talk about those tournaments and a bunch of other state tournaments there. And then for Michigan, Michigan's been over for a little for a month and a half, so we have nothing to talk about uh, with them. So Ethan is now going to jump back in and talk about his great home state of Iowa. So here at Iowa, we have a few teams rising above the rest to prove their mettle. Uh, standing out from the pack, there are two really good teams, 10435, the Circuit Breakers, who have pulled off several 25 mineral runs in competition at both at their league meets and league championships. They won their league championships. And then the second really notable team is 113-16, the Weapons of Mass Construction. 
and they're doing really well. Both are primarily kind of running toward the close crypto box. So you can see 10435 over in, we're watching their robot now. They're pretty similar to last year being really, really simple. Um, not a lot on their robot in the term, in the way of aesthetics or anything. And really just trying to get their robot done very, very well. Um, Weapons of Mass Construction have pulled off a bunch of 10 cycle runs in their league championships, which they went on to win. Um, we see kind of masquerade style with the lower pivot point over in Circuit Breakers, some rev slides that just rotate with an intake on the end to score into the cargo holds. They're very efficient. And I'm kind of scared to see them at their super qualifiers next weekend. <laughs> It'll be fun. So but over at their super qualifiers in Sioux City, we have another really notable team, um, 7229, the BZ Bots. Um, who've, who are pretty interesting. I don't think we have a video of them. and But they are a pretty large arm robot with some 80-20 lifts who primarily is looking to drive around um, to the gold cargo hold. And 9052, which is a team I mentor, Recharged Orange, who pulled a few 9-10 to 10 cycle matches in practice and also won their league championships. So... I realize that we have forgotten to talk about the Kentucky FTC State Championship. I think there was confusion because on our map, we have that as part of the East region, but it probably should be a part of my region, the North region. So I'll just give you a little recap from the Orange Alliance. So uh, the Inspire Award winner at that tournament was uh, 13034 ROCKS Robotics. Um, Tech Hogs Robotics 7209 was the Inspire Award second place. Um, the winning alliance was comprised of 8417, 12835, and 4217. So, congratulations to those three teams. Um, the high score at the event looks like it was 427 points at in semifinals one, match three. Um, and looking at the rankings, 8417 Electric Legends was the only undefeated team at the tournament. Uh, anything else to add, Ethan, or anyone? That sounds good. Uh, that's a new state this year. They haven't had state championships in the past, so it's cool to see some new states rising up and joining the FTC Legion. Yeah, and uh, something to note about that state is I'm pretty sure priority for the event went Kentucky teams, Indiana teams, and then Ohio teams. Um, and um, if I remember correctly, the Kentucky event was run by a lot of the members of the um, Indiana State um, Planning Committee. So I, I, I know Keith Hall, who is the uh, affiliate partner in Indiana, was definitely um, helping out with this state championship. So I'm glad that the teams in Kentucky got to compete in their own state, and I hope that will continue next year. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support Fun Live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping Fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.